Oh, hey everybody, Married Man here. Just getting out my table saw sled to make a few simple cuts. I made this sled because I wanted something that was accurate, something that was safe, and something that was easy to use. So, let me show you how this is, meets all my criteria. I'm going to raise the blade. and put on the most important safety device on your table saw. This also has a clamp to hold the work down as it's going through the cut. Let's cut a piece, show you how it works. So we've got a piece here that I want to cut into some very small pieces. Now my miter saw does a great job cutting accurate cuts on longer pieces but with a miter saw you need to make sure to keep your hand out of that danger area around the blade here the device is set up so that it helps you stay out of the way of the blade so it keeps your digits where they belong not cut off I'm gonna take this small piece and I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces out of it that will be very accurate, 90 degrees, and that will be the same size. I've made myself a stop block that has a chamfered end to collect dust so that the dust, sawdust, will not get in the way of the cut. For this, I'm going to lock it down right here. I've got my piece, it will slide in and we'll make the first cut. But just like I was showing you, here is my stop block. It has the chamfer cut in. I'm going to set it here. If dust were to collect right there, it would just go into the chamfer and not get in the way. I can use a clamp to hold it in place to make my cuts. I could also, with this, potentially just use the clamp itself as a stop block. It already has a rounded corner that would stop the dust and the piece of wood would fit right up to it. For us to do our cut though, I'm going to use the stop block that we made. Secure it in position. Take our piece that we're cutting. Slide it in. I'm going to put in my ear protection. You always want to protect your eyes and ears whenever you're working with loud equipment. I'm able to secure my piece with the clamp and turn on our saw. We can take our piece out. We can check it. It is exactly square. We can make repeated cuts since we have our stop block in place by putting the piece in position, clamping it down, and we're ready to go again. Remove our cut piece, slide the block over, our piece over, and we're ready to go again. What I ended up with is three identically cut pieces, all of which are exactly square and completely repeatable. Since the curve of the blade is already cut, you can measure at any point that you need to. You need to change measurement. You just get out and measure to that curve and you know that it will be an exact cut. 
the clamp is adjustable so I can adjust it for different thicknesses of material. So it's completely accurate. It's as safe as can be for a sled. It slides very nicely. I keep my hands away from the blade as I'm working to cut the piece. I only put my hands up here to change or to put the material in to secure it. And considering this is virtually flat, it's easy to store in my small shop, my garage. I hope you like it. I'd like your comments about it, whether you think this is a good design, a poor design, and why. I'll show you how I made it. Just stick around. The first step is deciding what size of a sled you want and getting a nice piece of plywood and cutting it to size. Most miter gauges register three quarters of an inch in here. I went around and measured and it's almost in every place point seven six five. So I've used my calipers to lock them down and use that to set my fence. And I'm gonna cut a test strip in this before I cut my actual plastic and see if I get the blanks right. So I lower my blade so it's just high enough to cut through this plywood. I'm using the plywood to make some blank runners and see if I can get them to fit just correctly in the miter gauge slots. Cutting a wood runner to fit exactly in the miter gauge slots can be tricky and then using a wooden runner can lead to problems because the wood expands or contracts as the humidity changes. The cut dialed in so the cut piece fits in the miter gauge slot with no movement side to side. Now I can cut the runners out of UHMW. This ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is low friction and will not expand or contract like wood. I will put a link to this in the description in case you're interested. I broke into my wife's piggy bank and used her dimes along with some washers to raise the runners just above the surface of the table. The runners are thick enough to track in the miter gauge slots without bottoming out. The runners are not long enough to go across the whole table saw, so I'm having to use two runners lined up in each miter slot. After the runners are lined up in both miter gauge slots, I need to temporarily attach them to the bottom of the miter sled. To do that, I'll use super glue. I apply a liberal amount of the super glue to each of the runners, making sure not to over apply because I do not want the super glue getting on my table. Using the fence as a guide, I place the base of the table saw sled in place and then I put some professional woodworker weights on top. After it's able to sit for a while, I remove the weights and lift the base of the sled off of the table saw. When I turn it over, I pre-drill, countersink, and screw in each of the runners into place. At this point, I give it a dry run, realizing that I haven't applied any wax and that the fit seems snug, but it is able to slide. I think with a little wax, we can have it working freely. I get out the paste wax and a clean rag and I apply a generous amount of the wax onto the bottom of the sled and onto my tabletop. I let it sit for a few minutes and then I wipe it all down. After a good application of wax, it's time to give it another run and you see it slides much freer now. At this point, I need to remove the riving knife and completely lower the blade. I put the sled back into position and align it so that the back of the sled aligns with the back end of my table saw. And I secure that with some clamps to make sure that it won't move. I do that in preparation for the first cut into the sled. With it secured on the table saw, I'm going to turn the saw on and raise the blade up so that it, the blade comes through the table saw sled base. This will be the initial kerf cut into the base and will help us align 
where to put the back fence and front fence for our table saw sled. With that initial kerf made, I'm able to take the clamps off, put the back fence into place temporarily, turn the saw on, and gently pull the saw forward, stopping before I get to the back fence. I can then turn my table saw off, and I'm now ready to glue the back fence into place. I spread a generous amount of glue, and I spread it with an old card, and then I can place it on the back, aligning it to the back of the table saw sled base. The alignment doesn't have to be perfect, and I don't expect it to. This piece provides some rigidity to our sled, but is not gonna be used to align pieces for cutting. I clamp it into place, and I use a brad nailer, applying several brad nails just to hold it, making sure not to apply any brad nails in the way of the curve. I had already cut an eighth inch rabbit along the bottom of the front fence for dust relief. This helps prevent sawdust accumulation that could prevent your workpiece from fitting flush against the front fence whenever you're making cuts. After replacing the riving knife, I put the table saw sled on the table saw. I put the front fence in position and anchor it down with a clamp. I then pre-drill and screw in one end of that front fence. The other side of the front fence is allowed to pivot and is not screwed into place at this point. This allows me to make the kerf cut to the front fence and then use a square to get the front fence as close to square to the kerf as possible. Well, at least at this point. I line one side of the square up to the kerf and the other side to the front face of the fence. I can pivot the fence a little bit to get it as lined as best I can and then clamp it into place. I'll double check it with another more accurate square to see if I'm really close. With the front fence being held by a clamp, I'm able to pre-drill, countersink, and screw it into place with a single screw. At this point, we cut a rectangle or square shaped piece of wood to use in the five cuts to a perfect crosscut sled method. This method was developed for adjusting table saw sleds to make them as close to perfect as possible by William Ng. I will put a link to his video down below and I want to give him full credit for this. Basically, you take a piece of wood and you make five cuts, turning the board between each cut. This compounds the error in the angle of your fence. You then use some simple mathematics to determine how far to move your fence and which direction, whether you're moving it back or forward. Basically, on your fifth cut, you will take the cutoff piece and take a measurement at the far end. That will be measurement A. The bottom measurement will be measurement B. You subtract the length of B from A and divide that by four for the four angles. Then you divide that by the length of your fifth cut. And then you multiply the result times the length of the pivot point on your fence to the left-hand side of your fence. If it's a positive number, you will move the fence down. If it's a negative number, you would be bringing it up. In this case, my result was about 81 thousandths of an inch. I found some post-it notes, measured it with my calipers till it was close to that amount. I took a pointed piece of wood, secured it in place up against that end of my fence with some clamps, used the post-it notes as a spacer. Well, I took the screw out and put the paper between the fence and the point that I created by that piece of wood, secured it back into place with a clamp, pre-drilled and countersunk a new hole in the bottom. You don't want to go back in the old hole for the screw because it will mess up your alignment. And then added a new screw. I get my board and I start the process again. 
This process may seem tedious, but it truly is a way to zero in the squareness of your table saw sled. After two more rounds of adjustments, I was able to get the accuracy of the table saw sled to less than one one thousandth of an inch over the 29 inch span of the fence. After all adjustments, I was able to turn over the sled, pre-drill, countersink, and screw in several places to secure the back fence, getting close to but not intercepting the path of the saw kerf. There won't be any glue on this fence, so it's important to put enough screws to hold it into place over time. With both fences firmly in place, there's only one thing I needed, and that was a way to secure work pieces into place. I got these lever clamps from Amazon. They were inexpensive. I'll put a link in the notes below. I installed the blade guard, and now I believe we're ready to cut some pieces and see how this new table saw slid is going to work. You'll notice how my hands can be completely away from the blade, yet the piece that I'm cutting is secure. I can raise the clamp, I can examine the piece, I can even put it together and see that it matches perfectly square. Each time it will line up. Just flipping over one piece, you'll see that it's still square. In addition to setting up stop blocks on the table saw sled itself, I can set up stop blocks up against the fence. That way I can adjust them to any length I want and be able to have repeated cuts. You don't want to use the fence as a stop block itself, but add a block to it so that work won't be bound and potentially have a kickback. With a simple stop block clamped to the table saw fence or a stop block clamped to the table saw sled fence, this makes it very easy to have repeatable cuts. And with the accuracy of this sled, I can make small parts that will always fit together soundly because the cuts will be square. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around and watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. I'd like your thoughts about this design. I also like to hear what kind of table saw you have. This is a Cobalt KT1015. And I've been using it for almost two years now. It's been really, really good. This sled has really helped me to keep things safe and allow me to cut small parts. I could cut these on a miter saw, of course, but I might be putting myself in danger and there's no way that I could repeatedly get the accuracy that I get here on such small parts. This works really well and when it comes time, to take it down, it disassembles real easy. And I can take it with me. I could even leave the stop block in place if I plan on doing more of the same cuts later. Or I can easily reset it up by aligning my pieces to the curve and then adjusting the stop block up to it. Anyway, I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't. I hope you liked that video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I hear my wife calling. I gotta go.